today I'm going to show you how to do a steel line hot tap using VexWeb hot tap pole valves. Here we have a DN150 hot tap pole valve, also known as 6 inch. Uh, some of the features, it has a low stem with a cap on it, so after the hot tap is done, you can weld also the cap in place, so you can leave it underground. The hot tap pole valves are really good for underground installations. The machine that we are going to use today is Tonisco P30. The hot tap range for this machine is from uh, DN40, so one and one and a half inch up to DN200, so up to eight inch. The new concept, the machine comes in a handy suitcase where all the different parts have their own place. So after every hot tap, if you disassemble the machine and clean all the parts, put them in place, the machine will last forever. So every time when hot tapping with a ball valve, the first, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to check that the valve works properly. So we're going to take off the cap. We will do a visual inspection. There's no waste, no rubbish in the ball. Then we're going to check that the valve works. So it closes and opens without problems. In the Vexva ball valves, here is a mark where you can see when it's closed and when it's open. And it also has a stopper in the, in the stem. So now it works good. It also opens good. Now we're going to leave it fully opened. Then we're going to measure the length from the surface of the pipe until the connection end of the, of the valve. Now it says it's 43 centimeters. So what I would do now, I would take the manual, check how many shaft extensions do I need. So we have a combination where we, we have been using, uh, we have used a welding ring or reinforcement ring, and then we have welded the hot tap ball valve to the welding ring. So therefore, it, the, the, the reinforcement ring adds a little bit length to the hot tap overall length. But because the Tonisco P30 has an extendable shaft, it means that we can always uh, assemble the shaft just the right length so that we are able to make the hot tap. Now I'm going to show you how to assemble the shaft. The total length was 430 millimeters. So it means that I'm going to take the base shaft and add two extensions on it. Screw them in place. Then I'm going to take the, <coughs> the chuck, which goes all the way up to 120 millimeters. So, because the DN150 Wexford ball valve is reduced bore, it means that we're going to use 121 millimeter hole saw. So, it still fits to the smaller chuck. Then I'm going to take the hole saw, I'm going to screw it to the chuck. this I'm not gonna like force it to screw because the tightening comes from the pins so I'm gonna take a little bit back and see that the pins go in like this and then the chuck and the shaft will do the tightening like this now we have a shaft a hole saw and a chuck then we're gonna take the, the pilot drill Check that the barbed wires are okay. And then we're gonna put the pilot drill on place. And double check that it goes on the notch. So put it in. You take your Allen key. You also have one in the, in the kit. And first, let's tighten it just a little bit and check that it actually goes to the notch. So you tighten it a little bit, take it a little bit back, and make sure that the pilot drill is locked on the notch. And then you make the final tightening, like this. But now, because we are hot tapping into 
a steel pipe, we like to minimize the amount of waste that we get away from the pipe while drilling. That's why we want to insert a magnet around, around the pilot and try to get as much waste as we can away from the drilling. We have a center drill magnet which goes on the center drill like this and it's a really strong magnet. You put it again in place, first tighten it just a little bit, take it back, double check that it goes to the notch and then tighten it like this. And it's really important <coughs> when doing the 150 Vexve that you're going to use the normal or short pilot drill so that the valve has enough space to open and close. Okay, now the shaft is basically ready. Then we're going to add some uh, Tonisco metal cutting paste on the tip of the pilot as well as on the, on the hole saw. Just a little bit is enough. This will make the cut a little bit easier and make the cutter and the pilot last longer. Okay, then all we need to do is put some lubricant to the shaft. And put it to the valve. And these threaded ball valves, I like to assemble the machine so that I will first put the adapter and the shaft and then insert the body because it's easier to adjust the thread when the machine is not yet on on the adapter. The 150 Vexve thread works like a normal thread, so it closes clockwise and opens counterclockwise. There can sometimes be a little bit challenges to find the right starting point for the thread. But I guarantee that it always, when you're patient, you will always find it. Like that. And the adapter has an O-ring sealing, so basically you don't have to use excessive force, but it's good to still tighten it a little bit. Just so that it goes on the bottom of the thread. So now we have the drilling shaft ready, the shaft is lubricated. Then we're gonna take the body of the machine, gonna remove the feed socket, and place our first. We can also lubricate the ceiling of the machine and then place the machine to the adapter through the shaft or like this. And when ins inserting the shaft, it's good to lift a little bit the shaft or inserting the body, it's good to lift the shaft a little bit so the, the threads go better. Now the machine is mounted to the adapter. The adapter is mounted to the valve. And basically now the machine can already withhold pressure. Then we're gonna <coughs> mount the feed socket. So take the socket all the way up. And by doing this, you will make sure that you will always have automatically the right starting point for the hot tap. We're gonna 
put the socket on the body and you see that it's on the second notch here and it's a really good place to start. But before we actually put the socket, we want to make sure that when the shaft is up on the upside upright position, the valve can open and close freely. So I'm gonna, gonna take the shaft all the way up, like this, and close the valve. And now the valve is shut and there's still room for the shaft to move. Now we know that we are able to close the valve after the hot tap. We take the shaft up again and we close the valve. Or we open the valve, I mean, like this. We'll go slowly insert the shaft, the pipe, and take away the handle. And now we can insert the socket. Always when putting the body and also inserting the socket, try to avoid hitting the shaft so that the pilot drill doesn't break. Then we adjust the feed so that it locks on the right notch like that. We'll tighten it a little bit and now the machine is ready for pressure test. For the pressure test you can use compressed air or compressed water. Now. I'm gonna use compressed air because it's a little bit faster and more convenient. Pressurize the drilling chamber, put a manometer to control the pressure, and then take a leak detection spray. And go through all the welding seams. You can also check the ceilings of the adapter and the machine. The most important thing is to check the welding seams and everything that will stay on the pipe. Then, when everything looks good, we can depressurize. And basically, now you will be good to go to start the hot tub. Then, we're gonna take the electric drive unit. Put it to the shaft. Like this. And lock it in place with the gear locking screw. It's really important to, to lock the drive to the shaft. It will make the machine as one solid structure. And it will make the cut much more easy, much more smoother. Okay, so now we have uh, Assembled the shaft, we have uh, fully opened the feed socket, the feed socket is in place, the drive unit is locked, the pressure test is complete. Now I would give a permission to start hot tapping. But of course first we have to, we have to gear up and put our safety equipment. So eye protection. helmet and if needed earplugs. The hot tap pr procedure starts with the pilot drill hot tap or drilling and for that you want to select the fastest RPM possible. So take a little bit back from the feed socket, select the number two from the gear and the far fastest RPM from the RPM selector. Then before you start hot tapping Make sure that you have a good posture 
and you feel that you are able to stand, uh, keep your posture while feeding the machine. So now, for example, this is not a good fit. I need to be a little bit higher. So therefore, I'm gonna take the bench and check that I'm able to provide a good support for the machine. So now I have number two selected. I have a good posture. Now I'm ready to start the hot tap. Take a little bit back so that the shaft can move freely in the beginning and then start. When doing the drilling, you don't need to push or use any excessive force, just let the machine do the work. You can verify the pilot drill penetration from the manometer. The pressure rises to the same pressure as in the main. So now the pilot drill has penetrated the pipe. Let's make a couple more turns. And then we're done with the pilot drill hot tap. Then the small space between the hole saw and the pilot drill, we can take away just by turning the wheel. And also here, if it's not really noisy, you can hear when the barbed wires catch the pipe, like that, like this. Now it stops. Now we take a little bit back and we see that this is the feet distance that we still have left. And basically this is just on the edge that it's not going to be enough. Therefore, I'm gonna adjust the feet socket again for the whole saw drilling. And now it's also good to remove the, the manometer because we already know that the pilot drill has penetrated and we already have verified the pressure inside the drilling chamber. Okay? By adjusting the feet, you put your body weight on the handles, you release the socket by turning counterclockwise and then you just keep on pushing and turning the socket finds the next notch, like this. Then you tighten it again and you're good to go. <clears throat> so now we, had, we have this drilling distance here and this is more than enough for this drilling. So I'm, I'm able to start the whole saw drilling. Then I will take a little bit back, I will adjust, adjust the gear to number one and take a little bit back from the fastest. Again, support the drive unit, and now you can start the whole saw cutting. Also, when doing the whole saw cutting, please do not excessively feed. Just let the machine do the work. Feel the machine, feel the RPMs, that they are okay. And if you have a partner, you can always share so that the other one holds the machine and the other one does the feed. But always make sure that you are not overfeeding so that the, the, the cutter won't get stuck. When the hole saw has penetrated the pipe, you can hear it from the electric drive unit and you can feel it from the feed socket. Then, because we want to make sure that we have finished the hot tub and the uh, cutter is true, we can double check by only turning the feed socket and then we can verify that the hot tub was successful. Then, we're gonna take the shaft up and close the valve. Also here, 
put your body weight on the socket, release it, and let the shaft come up. Just like that. And then, because we are going to release the pressure also from the chamber, it, at some point we want to take away all excessive weight from the, sh from the shaft. So now we can remove the drive unit. And also the socket. So now when we at the end when we release the pressure there's not so much weight on the shaft so it doesn't drop on the ball. And before we close the valve it's good to always flush the drilling, drilling chamber so that we can get as much waste away before we close the valve. Because the waste that we got from the pipe are really not good for the ceilings. We're gonna take the pressure relief hose from the suitcase. We're gonna place it to the control cock. And then we're gonna flush the drilling chamber by opening the control cock. Always put it away from yourself, especially when dealing with hot water this, we can close the ball. Make sure that the shaft is up, but also the pressure makes sure that it's up. Then we're going to close the ball like this. Then we want to release the pressure also from the drilling chamber. So we take the hose again, insert it to the control cock, take it away from ourselves. And because I do not have a partner, I'm just gonna slowly open the control cock and let the pressure come out slowly while holding the shaft so it doesn't drop on the ball. Now we have released the pressure, the valve is closed, then we can dismount the adapter and the machine. In here, I also like to hold the shaft while I'm opening the adapter to avoid to avoid the shaft hitting the ball. Now it's fully open. We have the coupon. Everything looks great. Then disassemble the shaft and the machine. Clean everything, put everything in place and you can call it a successful hot tub. It's extremely important always disassemble the machine right after the hot tap or hot taps. It's much easier and if you wait for months or so on, it's easier for the parts to get stuck and it's not good. So now I'm gonna show you how to disassemble the machine. I'm, gonna not, I'm not gonna need these anymore. I'm gonna change to my Professional cap. Okay. Disassembling the shaft. So first, we're gonna unlock the pilot drill. Remove the pilot with the coupon. Like this. And we can see that a lot of waste is also on the magnet. We're gonna clean the magnet. Clean the pilot drill and then open the shaft itself. We're gonna need 
shaft opening pin. The Tonisco special keys that are delivered with the machine. And now because I have extensions, I know that I'm gonna need two pins. I'm going to slide the special key to the shaft. Lock it in place with the pin. I'm gonna lock the pin to the place. I'm gonna take the bigger end of the because I'm gonna do it immediately. It should not be so stuck. Stuck. So I'm just gonna slowly. Hit it and it opens pretty easy. Then I'm gonna remove the pins like this and open the hole saw. Clean the chuck, put it in place. Then opening the extensions, you do the same. Slide it in, lock it with the pin. Hold it and open it. And once more, take the pin, take the special key, slide it to the wall, not to the shaft. Lock it with the pin. And then open the shaft. Then clean everything, put all the parts back to the suitcase. And so by doing that, the machine will last forever.